Hello, my name is Ivy Prosper, and in this episode, I am going to be talking to a phenomenal woman. Her name is International Hannah, and she is bringing love to Ghana. She is having her first Singles in Africa mixer, bringing the diaspora and Ghanaians together, matching singles. And it's something that people are always asking me about in Ghana. What is it like dating? I want to come to Ghana as a single woman. How is it to date there? Will I meet someone? Is it safe there? You're going to get your questions answered in our conversation as she tells you all about this exciting event that she's doing. This is the first, but it's not going to be the last. You'll hear more about what she's doing. So stay tuned. All right, so I am here with International Hannah, and I'm so excited about this conversation we're having today. Yes. You are, you're not only a real estate broker, but you're mm -hmm. also a relationship matchmaker. Yes. And you're from Chicago, mm -hmm. and you are here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Ghana, Kwaba. Thank you. Madasi, Madasi. Hey! <laughs> She's got it. She's got it. <laughs> so I want to know, Hannah, um, what brought you to Ghana? Because you're from Chicago. You're yes. not from Ghana. You don't have roots here. What made you decide to come here? Well, initially, um, I came to Ghana just because Ghana started having a lot of um, media around it, media attention. I saw a lot on social media about a lot of celebrities being in Ghana. This was in January 2023. Uh, Chance the Rapper had a festival here. And I think that is what initially got me going to say, I really need to go there. Now, just to rewind it a bit, I have always been an Africa enthusiast. Okay. Okay. So I went to Malawi for the first time in 2011. Oh, really? At wow. The time. So this has been something that's just been running through my blood. I went to Kenya twice after that. And I went to South Africa after that. And so Ghana was actually around the, you know, fourth or fifth African country that I visited but it also has been one of the most impactful. This is really interesting. What what made you decide as a young woman to go to Malawi? Because it's not a country that people usually have on their radar mm -hmm. coming from the U.S. It's usually, you know, Kenya, which you mentioned you went there, but usually mm -hmm. the first one is not Malawi. Like people think Kenya, South Africa, Morocco, yeah. Egypt, <laughs> but not Malawi. What yeah. made you go there? Well, I initially went to Malawi um, with a nonprofit organization called Build On, and we went to build a school. So I've been in real estate development since I was 17. <laughs> and so we actually uh, went and developed in a village in Malawi to help build a school and just bring more, you know, um, education and resources to the village. And from there, that is where the connection with Africa started. Mm -hmm. And then from there, Kenya, mm -hmm. and, and now eventually Ghana. Yes. And, and this Ghana. is not your first time in Ghana. No, no. The first time that I came to Ghana was in January of 2023. After once again, seeing all of the social media videos and things of people who are from my city, Chicago, yeah, yeah. Chance the Rapper, shout out to you yeah. from Chicago. Okay. He's out here and I'm seeing other like radio hosts from Chicago. And I'm like, wait, Africa has always been my thing. <laughs> so if all my people are out there, I need to go and see what's happening in Ghana. Yeah. And so that's when um, I actually came by myself. 2023 in January, I just booked a flight three days before I just woke up out of a dream. So after waking up out of the dream and saying, Ghana, I said, it's time to make this happen. And so I booked the flight about three days before I had no intentions on anything. I didn't know what I was about to get myself into. I was going by myself. And so um, I actually came to Ghana alone in 2023 in January. But I realized quickly that this was a location that I could actually be here alone, mm -hmm. feel safe, and integrate with the culture and meet new people. And it was a great place to come single because <laughs> I came single the first time <laughs> and I met a lot of people. Oh, did you? And they were very nice. Yes. And I liked it. I was like, oh, this is a vibe. <laughs> and so I think that's the initial start of how the idea of matchmaking, right. um, specifically the diaspora with Africa came along. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting you say that because a lot of people when they come here single, so I hear stories about, I'm coming to look for my African king or my African queen, and they're coming looking for love. Um, they realize there's a dynamic they have to navigate. There's um, the cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, you know, different things that you're not used to, food, and, um, but overall, when people love, love is love, right? Love is love. Yeah. So what were what were three things I want to hear? What were three things 
that you noticed about Ghanaian men that may have surprised you? Uh, three things that I noticed. Um, number one, that they were very attractive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know prior coming to Ghana because I had gone to other African countries and I didn't find the same attraction. No shade to any of the Af other African countries. But some of them, it's just not, it wasn't there for me, but yeah. uh, it's something about West Africa where I was like, oh, this is where I needed to be this whole <laughs> time. So um, there was an attraction there. There was also um, a gentleness, a gentle spirit mm -hmm. coming from the Ghanaian man in particular that um, I just wasn't used to. Most American men are a little bit more boisterous, um, sometimes too boisterous, sometimes to you know, demanding, and I felt that there was like a soft, kind spirit coming from the Ghanaian men. And um, hmm, what would be another one? I just I, I feel the cultural traditions. Like right. I automatically feel that they go right into that role of I'm the man. I'll pay for it. I'll drive you. I'll open up the door. Like they go into those cultural roles, mm -hmm. and I'm all about like those traditional cultural roles. So okay. that works for me. Okay, okay. You found your three things, mm -hmm. and so this coming Friday, um, you are doing an event. Yes. We're sitting here at Cloud Nine. Thank mm -hmm. you, Cloud Nine, for the space. You are doing the event right here at Cloud Nine. Yep. Um, tell me, what was the moment that you realized I have to do this? this singles mixer? Like, what made you decide to do that? Amazing question, Ivy, <laughs> because it really came to me from the people, like from my friends, from the people, reaching out to me, just asking me how my life drastically changed after I found my Ghanaian man. You found a Ghanaian man? I found a Ghanaian man. See, we didn't get to that part of, of the story, but I found a Ghanaian man. Now, this was on my third trip to Ghana. The first trip was in January, 2023. Yeah. The second trip was in October uh -huh. of 2023. I brought a group right back with me. I said, you guys gotta come How many see people this. did you bring? 10 people. Wow. I said, come back and see this. So I brought a group back with me. Once again, we're catching the vibes. We're having a good time. We could have went anywhere in Africa. We came back to Ghana. And then after October, I came back in November because I decided I wanted to give myself some really some real time to engage myself here in the culture and in the atmosphere and to really give myself a shot at finding love. You know, it's kind of hard to like find love if you're when going you're back and forth yeah. and you know, so you, you somebody has to make a commitment somewhere. And I was like, well, I can make the commitment with Ghana because I already love being there. And so when I came back um, of November, 2023, that's when I actually met my now man. Okay, I met All right. him December, 2023. All right, so I'm waiting to hear the details now. <laughs> How did yes. you meet? Um, we actually met at the number one hotel. So if you want to meet a good man, go to the good hotels. <laughs> but not only that, it was, it was, we just met, you know, random. Like yeah. I was, I had on workout clothes. It was no, you know, um, formal meeting or anything, but we met and we clicked and we started going out on dates and he just happened to live in Chicago. And that's where I'm from. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, born and raised. He's born and raised Ghanaian. He has, he was lived here for 20 years. So it's not like he just right, was right. one that just, you know, stayed, was born here and then went to the US right. his whole life. No, he is speaking tree and all of that. Um, but he moved to the US and he's been living there for about 15 years. So he's living in Chicago. And living in Chicago. And you met in Ghana. That's mm -hmm. so interesting. <laughs> yep, yep. It, it really, um, it, it was so like, to, I mean, for both of us, we were both taken back because you don't meet a lot of people from Chicago. At least I've noticed in Ghana. Um, I don't know. You meet people from all over the diaspora, but just sometimes to meet someone that you click with from your same state was like, okay, this is, this might be meant to be. Wow. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> wow. So on this trip, is he here on this trip with no, you? No, or? he's not here on this trip. He's not here with me now because he supports me in my endeavors and all the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so how this idea came about for that singles in Africa mixer is because here I am in Chicago. We, we've decided at this point that we want to do life together. Yeah. And so I've gone back to Chicago and we are doing life together in Chicago. And I have people who are watching me on my social media, my friends, people who are, are, are associates of me. And they're just like, Hannah, your life looks like it is a movie. Like how, 
you know, how are you being blessed with all of these things and doing all of these things and getting all of these things and going all of these places? And I'm like, well, I have a good energy and a good spirit and I work hard, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, number two, I found a good man and he's from Ghana. And they're like, well, does he have a brother? Does he have a cousin? Does he have an uncle? And I'm like, listen, I'm like, he, his family, <laughs> they're all doing their thing right now. And they aren't, you know, on the they're market. Not, they're not single, yes. They're not single. They're not on the market. But I'm like, you know, there are plenty of other men in Ghana. And so I kept having people like reach out to me about mm -hmm. that. Like, seriously, mm -hmm. you know, asking me like, can we do a double day? Does he have a friend? Does he? And I'm like, you know what? It's a lot of people looking for love. And I feel that I have positioned myself. I've been blessed enough to be in a position where I found love mm -hmm. and I actually found it coming from the diaspora and coming to Africa. And I just want to help others be able to achieve that same goal. So he basically, you know, gave me a part of the bright idea and said, hey, people are asking you, you're already trying to take tour, you know, you take tours to Ghana. Why don't you take people who are single and looking? And I said, that is an amazing idea because it was, it was all, everything was there. It was just, that was the missing piece that yeah. I couldn't really put together. And so immediately I just jumped on it. I said, I'll be going to Ghana in uh, September. And when I go in September, I want to start by having a mixer. Um, I want to get people on the ground who are already from the diaspora in Ghana, or if they're flying over from the diaspora and they happen to be here for that weekend of the mixer, come through local Ghanaians, local Africans. They can be from anywhere in Africa. You can be from Nigeria, you can be from Ghana, you know, anywhere, Morocco, you are invited. We do have a process that we put everyone through when they RSVP, this is a RSVP only event. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing these processes to make sure that we're vetting the people that are coming in so that we can really put together some unique matches. Mm -hmm. This is not an event that you just come to like any other party and you just walk in and the music's going and you grab a drink and you just off isolated on your own. We have activities planned. We have logistics in place so that we can really try to help match people and see if someone can find love out of this. So it's very intentional the yes. way you're doing it. There's going to be, it's, so it's going to be like, is it going to be like speed dating? How, what's the process? Yes, absolutely. So when I got to Ghana, just to back it up a bit, when I got to Ghana, I hit the ground running. This was basically September 1st. Today is what, the 17th? Yeah, the 17th, 18th. 18th, you know, so it's been about 18 days that I'm like hitting the ground running and I'm like, I have to get with the venue. I have to have my team ready. We've got to put the logistics in place. We have to broadcast and market the event that hasn't even been created yet at this point. And so um, thankful to Cloud9 Osu, uh, Kerwin, the CEO of Cloud9. Um, he reached out to me a while back on my Instagram and said, I love what you're doing. He saw some of the marketing that I was doing around the tours mm -hmm. that I eventually plan to do single tours. But right now I decided let's start with a mixer. Let's, let's get some of the people on the ground here. Now we can do something now and we make the tour next year. And so Kerwin loved the idea. He said, hey, if I can be a part of it anyway, let me know. And so when I came back, I came straight to him and I said, Kerwin, we want to put on a mixer. Would you like to be a part of it? Would Cloud9 like to host the event space for us? And he was absolutely down with it. That's good. And so now we are here and the event will be happening at Cloud9 this September 20th, Friday. And um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of processes that we had to put in place to make sure that this happened. And it started off with people RSVPing. This is not an event you can just walk into and say, hey, I wanna, no, yeah. your name has to be on the list. And the reason that we're doing the RSVP and all of these processes is because we're collecting data. Mm -hmm. So the data that we're getting on all of the guests and attendees gives us an idea of how to match people. We get to understand, is it a female or is it a male? What is your age range? Um, where are you from? Where do you wanna live? How long have you been single? Um, have you ever been married? Can social media accounts. I mean, we're getting to the nitty gritty. You're checking them all out. Yeah, we're checking them out. Making so that, sure they're not mm -hmm. like, you know, some sketchy people who are trying to, yeah, that's exactly. good. Exactly. That's really good. Exactly. So, so with that process, um, with that process, it actually makes it more efficient for everybody, right? For people who are trying to find love, um, it makes it efficient for the singles in Africa mixer, you know, to be a, a reputable brand around this. 
because that is something that is important, right? We want to be able to show people that you can come here and you can find love. And so that as we continue to place these events and we mm -hmm. put on tours, people will feel trusted with, you know, finding love through us. Mm -hmm. You've been blessed because <laughs> it's like you met someone and everything has just been like a whirlwind Literally. of love, which is <laughs> phenomenal. I'm, I'm so happy for you that that worked out for you. There are some people who are a little bit jaded. I don't know if you've heard stories of people who have felt like they've been trying and it's not been working out. Um, they feel like there's cultural clashes. Have you heard any of those stories and how Absolutely. would you um, tell someone to overcome those things and keep trying? Yeah, I, I feel that nothing is perfect in life. There are always gonna be obstacles in any race that you decide to date, um, in any situation. And so we do have disclaimers. <laughs> We say that you can come and we will try to find you love, but there are no guarantees. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't guarantee love, but we can guarantee that you're gonna meet people. We can guarantee that you will find a connection. We'll get guaranteed that you can find a vibe or a new business partner. You know, you will be able to build some type of connection because the way that we're integrating the guest is on a more one-on-one -on -one level. And so um, it gives you an opportunity to actually get to know somebody new organically. And so, um, but to answer, to specifically answer your question, I think that people should just have an open mind. Mm -hmm. You kind of know what you're getting yourself into because if you're from the diaspora and you decide you want to attend this event, it's probably because you like African men or you like, you're African man, uh, a diaspora man and you like African women. Right. So you already know what you like. Mm -hmm. And now this is just a channel of an event, particularly for these people. Mm -hmm. It's for us. Mm -hmm. It's for people who want this. If you don't want it, then maybe this wouldn't be the event for you because it is specific to connecting the diaspora with Africa. Same thing on the African side. The African men and women who attend this event, they are interested in dating people from the, from the diaspora. They want that cultural integration. There are gonna be differences. We aren't gonna all you know how to speak the same languages at all times and things, but these are people who are willing to learn. These are people who are open. These are people who um, you know, are just willing to see and take a chance on what could be. Do you find that most of the people who registered are people who, like, I don't know what the questions are you ask when you're filtering out who's who's coming. Do you find out if they're, you know, single, never married, or if they're divorced, or like, do you look for those, like that status when you're doing the matchmaking, or that doesn't matter? Um, it doesn't matter if they were married or not, at least on this particular form that we had them fill out. Maybe in the future forms, we may add that question. We can always readjust and change our questions this is the first event mm -hmm. on this particular form. We did ask them how long have they been single? Okay. Because we thought that that made more sense that to makes, ask. Yeah, that makes yeah. a difference because people don't think about that. You might meet someone and it might seem like they're great and you don't know, like they, they literally just broke up with somebody two weeks ago. Oh, wait, exactly. So they're not fully healed and then they're jumping into something with you and you don't know mm -hmm. that this is the case because they may not disclose it to you. So that's but, the bigger question. Yeah. How long have you been single? If you've been married, divorced, I don't really think anybody should be judged by that past yeah. um, because things happen. Yeah. You know, people get married, people get divorced. And I think that's a question that you can talk to your person one-on-one once you find somebody mm -hmm. that you're matching with. You can have that conversation with them on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. You don't have to let the whole world know you were divorced, you know? So, um, but we are going to refine our questions as we continue with this because we want to make it a go-to event. We want to make it a go-to um, space where people can say, I feel safe doing the Singles in Africa Mixer because I know that they're vetting. I know that they're putting together a good group of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that this is gonna be a nice event where I can not only maybe find love, but I can also find um, connections and build connections with people that can be, you know, long lasting forever. Have you done something like this in the States? So the funny thing is I haven't done anything like this in the States because for me, I'm always coming to Africa looking for love. So for me, it was never really a thing for me in the States. Yeah. Now I will admit there are people who are doing things like this in the States and, um, and it's amazing. I love to see it, but it, it wasn't for me, it wasn't a target audience for me because it's not what I'm interested in. I'm, I've always been interested in coming to Africa, traveling over here, the culture, the men. So that's the reason why I decided let's do it in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, let's come to Africa and let's do it here. And so maybe I will put on one in the States one day for some of the Africans that are in the States right? and, and Americans that are in the States. You know, we may end up doing one over there, but I think Africa is a good place to really kick it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does your, um, your, your current boyfriend feel about 
you know, you, I mean, I know he helped with the idea, mm -hmm. but now you're actually executing. Yes. What are his thoughts on it now? Oh, he loves it. He's like, see, this is exactly why I'm with you. Like, you know how to just take a situation and turn it into a reality. And that's what it's about. You know, Ghanaian men and, and, and a lot of African men in general love women who are ambitious, who can help them with their dreams and their goals and their ambitions and, and to push each other, like to build up. And so um, he's super excited that I just made that trip here and decided we're going to do this. So are you a relationship expert? Like, did you take any courses and training on on psychology or whatever it may be? Because we see a lot of dating coaches, yes. relationship coaches. Did you study mm -hmm. that at all or just you kind of fell into this? I just fell into it. But now that I'm falling into it and I'm getting deeper, I have decided that this is something to consider for me to study a bit more because whatever I do in life, I want to be official with it. I want to be certified. I want to be that real legit person because there are a lot of people on social media that can do a lot of things. I fell into this situation, but now that I'm in it, yeah. I'm considering getting some, uh, uh, maybe a master's in counseling, you know, marriage and therapy counseling, psychology, just to get deeper into it. I'm also reading more books to try to understand a little bit more about how to think like a man and, you know, how yeah. you can um, really help people navigate through relationships, right? And so, um, yeah, right now, it, it's really just me doing it off of the vibes mm -hmm. and off of a situation that I kind of fell into. What are some things that you would tell a woman she should look out for as red flags in a man? Mm, red flags. It, it, I can't really pinpoint what, right? But what I can say is if you feel that you have a red flag, don't ignore it. That is all I can say, right? Because anything could be a red flag. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on what you like or different. dislike. Yeah. If a man is constantly spitting, that could be a red flag for you if you don't like somebody that spits all the time, you yeah. know? But once again, if you identify a red flag early on, don't ignore it. Ruger mm -hmm. said best. She ignored the red flags, baby. <laughs> he has a song, okay? It's called Red Flags. And um, just don't ignore them. Like, you'll see them. If it's not a big red flag, you can move past it, right? If it's not big to you. But if you start seeing multiple, you probably should just get out of the relationship sooner than later. Because mm -hmm. you'll turn around and you're in the relationship two, three, four years later. And you're just collecting red flags at this point. You're becoming a flag. <laughs> you are the flag. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and uh, what do you think guys should, should guys do the same thing? Like what should, what should men look out for when they're trying to find a woman? Well, for men, I think they know what they want. So I can't tell them what to look out for. That's one thing about a man. Mm -hmm. When they see their wife, they know it. When they see what they want, a lot of times they know it. When they don't want it, they walk away from it. And, um, and, and sometimes it leaves a lot of women hurt, not understanding why the relationship didn't work or why did you know he walk out of the situation. So I think for, for men, it's just to continue to be a man, you know, use your uh, masculine instincts to determine what works for you because mm -hmm. they know what they can deal with mm -hmm. and what they can't tolerate. Mm -hmm. So immediately, if they meet a woman and they see that she has red flags, or things that they just can't tolerate, whether that's traditionally, culturally, she's doing things where she looks beautiful, but it's like, oh, the way she's acting, well then pull yourself out of that. Because then again, you'll be there six months or a year or two later, and you'll be holding resentment in a relationship. And now, um, you know, you're still in it, but you're resenting it. And now it's just a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I want to touch on a, a hot button topic something that I often hear people talking about in Ghana, actually, because mm -hmm. um, I've been I've been living here now about eight years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things people often joke about, I see memes about are like there was one I saw on TikTok and this woman, she's holding a baby. She was holding like um, a broom to the ceiling, like she's holding something. And then the man walks in and she's like, I need your help. I need your help. And then he walks in. It was the weirdest TikTok I've seen. but. I was, I don't know why I kept watching it, but she's standing there. And then the man walks in and she's like this for him to take the baby. He takes the baby and then she goes like this for him to hold the stick to hold the thing up and then he takes it. Now she goes in his pocket to take his phone and she wants to go and look in his phone. Oh. Yes, Ooh. because now he's holding the baby and he's holding the stick. So now hey. he can't grab his phone. So she's going <laughs> for the phone now. I see all these videos and memes about women wanting to look through men's phones or men wanting to look through women's phones. 
What do you think about that? Do you <laughs> think that that means they're not trustworthy if they don't give you their password to their phone? Do you think that you have to have the password to their phone? Do you think that that is the signal of, I can't trust the person because they won't let me look at their phone? <laughs> it's so funny you say this, Ivy. I just put out a video about this. I put out a video yesterday about, should you be sharing the passcode to your phone with your man? Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with my opinion on the situation. I do not think you should be sharing the passcode because the passcode is the code to the secrets of your heart and your soul. Mm -hmm. And if you all are not married yet, then there's no need to share the passcode. Now, if he wants to look through your phone sometimes, she wants to look through your phone casually, maybe you guys were looking at something, whatever, that's fine. You shouldn't feel threatened by your partner looking into your phone. But having access to your passcode means that they have access to everything that your phone um, includes, right? Which is just like your social identity. It's all of your credit cards, debit, you know, it's everything. It's your notes. It's a diary. Like, so because of those reasons, because a phone is so much more technologically advanced now, it's not just a cell phone anymore with text messages. And it's pictures. you're walking around with a computer in your yeah, pocket. You're walking around with a computer, computer a TV, uh, like, yeah, what uh, you've been watching. <laughs> so I, I don't, once again, just to clarify, it's not a problem. If your partner, you guys are in a relationship, they want to maybe go through your phone. You already had it open, whatever. That's fine. But to necessarily have to share the passcode, no, not unless you want to, mm -hmm. because it could bring on drama. And that's the reason why it's there. It's a code. It's your code, you know, for your sacred device. Mm -hmm. Now, once you become married at technically at that point, you're one. Yeah. So, I mean, at that point, you should be able to share passcodes. I think that's when it's OK. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering that. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's one of those things I see so many times on social media, um, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, here in Ghana, I see, <laughs> I see it a lot. It's a hot topic. And it, and, and it was, it's just so surprising because I literally did a video on it. And there are a lot of people that are agreeing with what I'm saying. I didn't get much disagreement um, with what I'm saying because I think it's just pretty logical. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to mm -hmm. share your passport as a, as a married couple, mm -hmm. I think it's okay. If you're married and you don't want to share, then there's a problem. I don't know what type there. of marriage you're in. <laughs> Yeah, trust is a big, big thing that mm -hmm. people have to really, really work towards. I think sometimes people trust too quickly. Yeah. In my opinion, anyway. Sometimes people trust too quickly when they're jumping in head first without taking their time. But at the same time, sometimes you just know. Yeah. You know, you just know and, and you need to move to move fast when you know you want something, you just go for it. Exactly. So and it's and that's the thing. Matters of the heart are unpredictable. Mm-hmm. They're really unpredictable. Mm-hmm. Um now we've been talking a lot about relationship stuff, which I know lots of people will tune in for if they want to follow you and want information on, on this upcoming event, or if, not, if they miss this one, any future events, how yes. would they get in touch with you? Absolutely. So they can get in touch with me at international Hannah. That's my Instagram international Hannah. And, uh, we will be having more of these mixers. This is the first singles in Africa mixer, Ghana edition. And it'll be hosted here at Cloud9, September 20th on a Friday. So if you're here in Ghana, pull up. If you're not, don't worry. We will have another one. And so um, we want to just continue to have these. And then we want to also move into the tours. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be looking at the tour next year, which will be the Singles in Africa Tour, Ghana edition. Singles it'll be a, Africa yes, tour. it'll be a 10 to 14 day tour. Um, you're staying. We're going to have singles on the tour. We're going to be meeting with singles. Um, while we're on the tour. So it'll be a lot of moving parts. It'll be uh, open for men and women, only singles. We will have a mixer on the tour for anybody who's on the tour. So it's just exciting. We plan to keep this thing going and hopefully getting matches and helping people to find love out of this. That's really good. That's the important goal. Yeah, that's really good. And outside of this, I mean, we talked in the beginning, you talked about real estate. I want to yes. briefly touch on that as well. Um, you have a successful real estate career yes. in the U.S. Yes. And are you bringing that into Ghana as well? Yeah, I actually am. Real estate is really my bread and butter. That's where the money is coming from. And I appreciate, I appreciate real estate. <laughs> Um, but I just know that I'm also more than just real estate. Mm -hmm. I'm more of an investor, but um, where I am in the States, I'm doing more agent activity, um, which I've been very successful at, but I want to move more into the investment side of things, which is just literally investing in properties and land and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. And so I'm happy to say that um, we are actually purchasing land in a as we speak right now. So we'll be starting a building process. Um, 
out here building, we want to start building communities where, you know, diasporans can also come when they visit, uh, local Ghanaians can stay, different things of that sort, you know, more of a hotel side, like Airbnb mm -hmm. side, side of a community, short term rentals, even people from the tour can stay and, and host at these communities. But the bigger goal is to develop. Um, and and I, that's going back into my original uh, statement, which is I was a real estate developer at the age of 17 in 2011. That will always be near and dear to my heart. I think that that's a bigger goal, a bigger picture with everything. But um, sometimes when an opportunity just kind of falls into your lap and you're a good fit for it, you have to like take advantage of it and see where it goes. Yeah. So that's where I am. Yeah. And, and with this investment, you're working with someone here on the ground mm -hmm. in partnership. Is yes. your boyfriend also part of this whole process of the investing or is yes. that? He's a, he's a part of all of the investments here in Ghana that we're doing together. And, um, and we have a team in Ghana also. So lawyers and all type of surveyors and things of that sort, uh, contractors to start making this process really happen. So um, yeah, the real estate is just expanding. I'm international with my real estate. I'm working from Chicago. I'm doing real estate transactions in Chicago and I'm working here in Ghana. This so. Is so great. Yeah. That's so great. I'm really, really happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to know, what does Ghana make you feel? Because you, you obviously felt something that you, you've come back multiple times. What does it feel like being here? Like, what is it that draws you? Ghana makes me feel welcomed. And I would say that's just the number one word for me, welcome. Um, I feel like I can come here and be invincible. I feel like I can come here and do anything I want to do and have an open, welcoming arm to say, you can do it. Um, to even hold an event like this in Chicago would be, I think, a lot more difficult, challenging, trying to get people to hear the vision and, and hear me out could be a lot harder. I come to Ghana and I had multiple um, venues saying, yes, we would like to work with you on this. And I decided to go with Kerwin at Cloud9. So, I mean, the doors were just wide open. Um, and so I think that that is something that I also just get from Ghana, just a welcoming spirit uh, from the people on the business aspect, um, on the investment aspect, you know, and it's just, I think it's a beautiful thing. Who wouldn't want to feel welcome? Yes. Aquaba. Aquaba, <laughs> Aquaba. And you know, when uh, I'll teach you something and maybe the, 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 um, the viewers who don't know when they say aquaba mm -hmm. and you your response is supposed to be like for your peers okay and it's a female you would say or even female or male you say yenya yenya yes yenya yenya yes yes and that's how you would respond to somebody who's your peer but if it's like an elder mm -hmm. and it was an elder woman you would say yenna yenna Yenna. Yenna. And then if it's a um, an elder male, you would say Yeja. Yeja. Yes. So Yenya, Yenna, Yeja. Yes. Woo, I got it. Yes. <laughs> you got it. You I got, got, it. It. You got it. Thank you. you. you it. Thank you so much for today. Um, let's repeat again where people can find you. Yes, absolutely. So on Instagram, YouTube, uh, TikTok, all of my social media platforms are the same, and it's International Hannah. International Hannah on all social media platforms. And um, yes, come find me, let's connect. Come on the next tour, come to the next mixer. Let's find you love today in Africa. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I appreciate you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. My name is Ivy Prosper, and if you need to reach me, you can find me on all handles at Ivy Prosper. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.